Hi, Andy. Nice to meet you. Can we start with uh, an injury update? I know you've been short in the full-back positions. Any update there? Yeah, um, respect the last game we played against Swansea. Uh, Adam Smith is going to be part of the squad. I think he uh, has trained today. And uh, I don't know at what level, but uh, I think he's, he's available for us and uh, we we can uh, we can uh, use him tomorrow yes and no new injuries no new injuries and, uh, the rest are the the same as the the other day also we have uh, philip billing that uh, wasn't involved that is is also perfect he will travel i think the rest is is the same yeah uh, and antoine semenyo was back on the bench last week after afcon is he ready to go and start again I think he has been uh, training with us normal. I think uh, the other day probably we didn't want to use him because he just had uh, landed the same day without sleeping, you know, and OK, maybe for five, ten minutes if we need it in the cup game, we can we could use him. Uh, luckily for us, it wasn't necessary, but uh, now he is uh, he has had his his trainings and is 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 ready to help us. Yes. And Dango Batuara went out last night with Burkina Faso. When would you expect to have him available again? Ah, Dango, I, I hope he's available for the next game. It's, it's true that uh, it's, uh, it's two, three days between games, so it's going to be really tough. Uh, I hope he comes back with any, with any issue, especially with his ankle, that he has recovered uh, pretty fast for the for the African Cup and I hope he comes back and he's uh, fully fit and available for for next game. David Brooks has gone to Southampton on loan. He's been involved a lot for you, but not so many starts. Him having a decent run of games in the championship after so long out as well, could that be beneficial long term for himself and for Bournemouth? Yeah, I think uh, it was a movement. It was not a movement that we started, you know, I think uh, we've used a more Brooksy, more like a sub in second half than probably from the start. Uh, he thinks right now he needs a good run of stars to uh, arrive to his best level. Uh, and obviously, he's a, he's a player that I rate very high. I think he's a very, very good player. Uh, and uh, I hope he does well, and I'm sure he's going to do well because the last games he's played for us, he has been really good. And uh, we hope he he finishes very well the, the season and, and he comes back in, in pre-season uh, even being a better player. No, But it's not a movement that uh, it was started from us. No, At the end, we have to listen to the players, what they think, how they f see themselves. And uh, it's a matter that I cannot tell him uh, you are going to start every game. It's, for me, it's very difficult, especially in this position, No, uh, from the start of the season. I think uh, even with Sin, you know, he was doing very well and he didn't start again for, I think, for three months or something like this. And it's a uh, difficult decision uh, for, for, for everyone, but uh, I think uh, is what, what he wanted and I wish him all, all the best and I hope uh, he, he does very well. And uh, Roman Favre is back from his loan from Lorient. Five goals and 17 appearances. What can he do for you? I think Roman is someone that can help us in different positions because he's a player who has played inside as number 10. He can play outside, coming inside uh, to his strong foot. And I think he will uh, help us in, in, especially with the players we've lost in these eight, 10 positions. And now with the departure of, of, of Brooksy, uh, I think it was uh, quite an easy decision for the for the club. No? And you will be aware that there were some what seemed like quite wide of the mark reports this morning about Dominic Solanke. Um, in situations like that, do you have to speak to him about that speculation or can you just leave it? No, no, no. I, I, I know nothing about this, so I hope it's the same way in the next two days and, <laughs> and it finishes like this, but I have no news about this and uh, the same way I told you in the summer. Uh, uh, I, I don't expect nothing to happen in, in uh, with with them, especially. No. Yeah, the Bournemouth fans would have woken up this morning and felt quite worried about what they were reading. 
Uh, at least I have no news. I have no news. I expect not to have any news for two days, yes. Yeah. Um, what chances are there that you might be able to bring someone in before tomorrow's transfer deadline? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the chances. Uh, we still have uh, more than, I don't know, 40 hours maybe. Or it's a lot in the market because everything moves in the last minutes. So it's a, an uncomfortable situation. We also have a game tomorrow night. That is what I have in my mind. And I'm, I, I'm not working on these deals. I'm not uh, focusing on this side. I understand uh, your, your, your questions, but uh, I will evaluate whenever it finishes, how we are, who is in, who is out, and what we have. But right now, in my mind, uh, it's only West Ham. But uh, obviously, there are more people involved in the in the club who are uh, dealing with with uh, with the rest and we'll see how how it finishes yeah that's the difficult thing isn't it though the fact that you have a game it, i mean i guess there might be a situation where you might have to have the final say but you you're concentrating on the match yeah it's going to be very difficult uh, for everyone uh, it happened in the summer i think the day before brentford away that there were a couple of situations where players i think Jaden finally ended leaving, uh, Sini finally ended arriving, situations that uh, are difficult to deal with because we are traveling now, we are going to the hotel, everyone available is going to, to travel and uh, we'll see how, I will not be focused on these things, I will be focused on West Ham, how we to prepare for the, for the game, but it's it's, it's obvious that uh, these things uh, are on the on the minds of, of everyone. Yeah. And just finally from me, West Ham were your first competitive game in charge. What have you learned most about English football in that time since then? Uh, I, I hope I've learned something. I think uh, there is a lot of things to learn, especially about uh, the level of the competition, the demands of the competition. I think it was... Uh, Okay, quite a good game from us. It's uh, never easy. Sometimes you play at home and you want to win every time, but you have to value no? the point we, we had against a team that is now in the top six and they are doing so well. No? And uh, even they are stronger playing at home, so it's going to be uh, the same like uh, Liverpool, Spurs. We are having a uh, tough schedule again in the beginning of this second lap, let's say, and we have to go there and try to keep our chances as high as possible because we, we need points. Thank you. What's been the biggest surprise since that opening day? You know, you've watched a lot of Premier League football, of course, but then when you were first, uh, when you first experienced it and then along the way, what, what surprised you the most? Uh, it's, it's difficult to say a surprise, no? Uh, I think teams-wise, standing-wise, I think not big surprises. Right now in football, there are not big surprises. You know, the first team, 10 teams, I would say, is the first 10 teams that we all would say that we're going to be the, the first 10 teams. And then there is another fight for the second 10 teams uh, where we have been worse, now we are better. There is a big fight uh, for every point and it's going to be even tougher in the second part of the, of the competition. Now, if you ask me about what I like more about the game, about it's the atmosphere in the stadiums. I think the atmosphere in the stadiums is really, really nice in the Premier League with both uh, away supporters. Uh, I think uh, all the stadiums being a full capacity uh, uh, with the rhythm of the games, I think is uh, really entertaining for the for the ones watching. It's interesting you mentioned the league positions that you look at at the start of the season and things. Opt to have I think the right word is a supercomputer. This week, they've churned all the numbers. They predict you are most likely to finish 12th position at the end of the season. How happy would you be with that? Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't believe a lot in these things. You know, it's probably the one first is the or the one is going to be first or second. I don't think they are predicting someone who is 16th to finish fourth. And probably they will go pretty safe and they keep more or less the level where, where you are. I think we still need a lot of points. I think it's going to be a difficult season in terms of everyone is going to be really competitive. We are watching Luton bet 4 nil yesterday Brighton. No, it means that everyone is going to fight. We, especially with the start of the season we had, 
we have to continue getting good results because the differences are not so big in the in the standings and we need to to keep pushing because we need points it's a supercomputer andoni you can't argue with it <laughs> <laughs> It says 66% chance, 11th to 14th. Take me back to before West Ham the first time. Would that have been your target? Were you looking even higher? Were you just looking at 17th and survival? No, no. If, if you ask me, I, I take the whatever, but we have to play. The problem is we have to take the, we have to play the games and we have to deserve these positions, no? And this is the difficult part. You know, is the, you have to show very good things against very good opposition because the competition is really demanding. It's really demanding. You know, we are not winning any game in this competition playing 80%. This is, I have it very clear. So we have to be at our best to be competitive. And it's uh, it's uh, our performances will dictate if we achieve these things or not. Um, what have you made of West Ham who finished 2023 on a high beating United and Arsenal? The last four games started a little bit, but what have you seen? Ah, they are really good. Very good players. They are six on the table. They are especially strong at home. It's a team that uh, normally starts very strong the games. They are ahead a lot of times, and once they are ahead, it's very difficult because they are very comfortable. They are really dangerous in the counters. We in open spaces with uh, Kudus, with Bowen, with they have very good players. So. I think uh, it's going to be important for us tomorrow to start really well. The first minutes, play first minutes, try to score first, because otherwise we we face it in the first game of the season. No, once they they go ahead, it's, it's difficult to beat them. No, we at the end we manage to to get a point, but it's it's really difficult. Yeah. What will Calvin Phillips do for them? Another very good player. I think they have a very good midfield with different options. Uh, I think uh, they are very good winning the duels, the strong players, very good also on the balls. And they have added, they, they had previously very good players, but now World Prowse in the summer, uh, Alvarez, now Calvin Phillips. I think they are individually uh, very, uh, very solid players, very high quality players, proven players. And that's the reason they are so high in the t on the standings. And for you, I know you mentioned Adam Smith is, is coming back into the squad. How's James Hill? Uh, it's, uh, it's a tough one, I think, with, with uh, Healy. It's a high ankle sprain. It's not going to be a, a light one. And uh, he will be out, I don't know. It's uh, I'm six weeks, I would say. I don't know. Uh, knowing Healy, if he can do it in four, he will do it because uh, he will force and he will try and he will. But right now he's on a boot. He cannot do nothing for, for I think three weeks, and from there, he will start no uh, training more. And as soon as he can can train and do things, I think it's going to be quickly knowing the person. But we have to see that everything is 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 is, is good. So we will be. At least some time without him, yeah. You don't have much luck at fullback. No. Is it because you were a fullback and you punished them harder? Or I don't know. You're trying to get I don't know what we are doing with yourself? the fullbacks, but it's obvious. It's obvious that we right now is the, the reality. The only non-fullback injury player we have is Taylor Adams. The rest are all fullbacks that the ones that are out. And uh, we've had big problem with the left back uh, position, and now we are experiencing it in the in the other side I, I hope we can cope with it the same way and just one away from here you mentioned that the Luton game yesterday Tom Lockyer was on the pitch being applauded and he looked well how, how did you react to those yeah, very good news very good news I think everyone involved now in this situation uh, wants to know now that uh, he's he's doing well he's he's happy you can see the, the images with his teammates and I hope we'll have whenever we play him, play them the, the, the chance to, to meet him again and, and see that everything is developing in a in a good way. Yeah.